So you've used NR, you've used NMN, I believe as well, um, as for uh, NAD precursors. How do you see the two? Um, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So we have actually done that, NMN and NR and urolithin A directly and mitophagy stimulation using model systems like worms and also mice. And we see a similar kind of uh, stimulation degree, if you will. And I am uh, have worked most with, uh, by far most with uh, NR, but I also have worked with NMN and I see fairly similar uh, functions of the two. Mm -hmm. And it's a very complex discussion. There are many, many viewpoints on this because people are invested in different things and we still know much more about NR than NMN, but they're both very promising. And I think as far as I can tell, fairly similar. Uh, we still have much more clinical information at this point with NR than NMN, so we, we have better safety records, but I think that they have a lot of similarity and, and people are, are using different, either one based on, on, on a number of factors, including availability and, and so forth. So I, I, I often get asked this question because I work with both and I don't want to dwell in too much into the very complex politics of this, but I would say that the the effect we see on many systems and the cells are very similar in the and in our. They're just a few steps, well, one step apart, right, in, in the NAD precursor space. So Yeah, and there's a tremendous amount of discussion as to mechanistic differences and there mm. are mechanistic differences but um mm. for example i i should say that we are, are also using nr in, in alzheimer's because we have seen directly that it increases nad in the brain mm. and so you want to make sure that of course the, you hit the target. Uh, we haven't used NMN in, in, and it may also stimulate directly in the brain, but that we haven't used in that in those experiments. So one of them, so actually not part of Novo's core, but you have Novo's boost, right? Which is an, uh, an NAD uh, precursor, NMN. So can you talk a little bit about why you chose NMN as opposed to any of the other NAD precursors? Yes, that's a great question. Um, so we were actually, before we made that choice, we were completely agnostic at which NAD booster we would use. NR, NMN, niacin, nicotinamide. Uh, we, we were just, uh, we, we just looked into what would work best. We, uh, so we looked into the science and um, yeah, we, we, stick, uh, we stuck with the NMN uh, for, for several reasons. Of course, the, the two most well-known NAD boosters are NR and nicotine amide riboside and NMN. Um, and um, NR and NMN, uh, they are very interesting. Uh, we think that NMN is better for, for several uh, reasons, at least uh, as the science stands now, um, uh, because NMN has a phosphate group and uh, we think uh, compared to NR, um, and we believe that the phosphate group is very important uh, for stability, for absorption and so on. Um, the problem with NR is if you uh, take it orally, uh, a lot of it is already broken down in the gut before uh, absorption uh, systemically. And uh, um, so we believe that NMN is more stable and um, yeah, it's also a, a great way to boost uh, NAD levels. Um, there, is, there also has been discussion as to, uh, yeah, can you take it up? Can cells take it up? Uh, we, uh, a few years ago, there was an NMN transporter discovered. Uh, very likely there are more uh, of these transporters we still need to discover. Uh, but um, we see actually if you give NMN in drinking water uh, uh, to animals or to humans, uh, we see substantial improvements uh, in all kinds of biomarkers of aging. Uh, and that means whatever happens with the NMN uh, in the body, 
uh, it seems to have an interesting physiological effect in the end. Uh, if you give it to mice, they, uh, they age uh, less fast, uh, their eyesight uh, declines less fast, uh, their stamina uh, is, is improves considerably, their blood flow, uh, brain cells and, and brain function, and uh, uh, let's say blood flow in the brain improves uh, if you give NMN orally in their drinking water. Um, and in humans, we have recently seen uh, clinical trials where you give NMN to a uh, woman with pre-diabetes and uh, obesity, and it improves her, uh, metab some met metabolic biomarkers uh, of insulin resistance. Uh, we also see it, it improves uh, function, metabolic function uh, in uh, elderly men if you give NMN orally. Um, and we also see, for example, that uh, uh, a lot of companies, uh, biotech companies that uh, uh, want to develop drugs to treat aging-related diseases are basing themselves on an NMN backbone. Uh, uh, so they create a little variation of, of the NMN molecule uh, and they are not basing themselves on the NR backbone uh, of, of the molecule. Um, so yeah, we think NMN is uh, an interesting molecule. And for example, Professor David Sinclair, uh, he takes NMN, uh, he doesn't take NR. Uh, and other, uh, let's say, specialists in the field uh, we have spoken to, uh, they all prefer NMN. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, that's interesting. And then NASA and, and the U.S. military are experimenting with NMN, uh, not NR. Uh, so I think these are all, uh, let's say, uh, interesting uh, signs that probably NMN is uh, better than NR. But we, of course, we are a company that's continuously uh, looking at the latest science. So if that should change, uh, uh, and even if better NMN molecules come out, we will uh, implement that changes. Uh, so no, nothing is written in stones, and we are very, uh, let's say, open-minded uh, to new insights. And um, even uh, about NMN, that can be further improved because you have different versions of NMN. You have more, uh, let's say, crystalline NMN which seems to be more stable and better absorbed and, and so on. Um, and that's actually the kind of NMN we also use um, compared to more classical NMN that's still very available on the market. It's less crystalline. Um, so the way the NMN molecules are stacked together, it's, it's less organized. So uh, it, it leads to less stability uh, for the NMN uh, and, and so on. So even with the same NMN molecule, you can still vary and, and look at more interesting, let's say, versions that improve stability or absorption uh, and so on. Look, I, I guess the, um, you know, the last one that I'll just get onto, because mm. you, know, you mentioned it earlier, this whole question of how NA, NMN gets into the cell. Mm. So, you know, I said earlier, there are these two ideas, and this is a much better illustration. So, you know, uh, one idea is that NMN is just taken up directly by this transporter. And the other idea is that NMN is uh, first uh, converted into NR, nicotinamide riboside, outside of the cell. So that phosphate gets taken off and then NR gets taken up into the cell and then gets re reconverted or phosphor rephosphorylated back into NMN. So those are the two models. Um, now, from the data we have here, I think that the second like model is far more likely. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the idea here is that we compare the proportion of either NMN or NR that has a label. So if NMN is taken up direct uh, into the cell, we would expect to see lots of labeling of NMN. If NR was taken up into the cell, sorry, if NMN was first converted into NR and then taken up into the cell, we would expect to see more labeling of NR. So when we look mm -hmm. at the data, what has the greater degree of labeling, NMN or NR? And the data are very clear. This is NMN labeling, and this is NR labeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that to me says that NR uh, uh, is the is the intermediate for NMN uptake. Now, I, again, I do want to emphasize, however, that it, it doesn't mean that these um, precursors are exactly equal. Uh, I, you know, we actually need to are in the process of running these experiments. But um, it's likely that NMN has different, uh, what we call PK, pharmacokinetic properties to NR, which is to say how well it's taken up, where it's transported across the body, which tissues it gets into. Um, you know, NMN versus NR are not identical in that regard. And, you know, the, the other big question we had uh, from all of this work is that and actually, let me just go back to these data, these incredibly overwhelming data. And again, I apologize. 
um, you know, the majority quantitatively, you know, if we look at the y-axis here on the units, okay, so this is unlabeled NAD and then NAD that's only got the label on the nicotinamide ring. So you can see, you know, 400 versus 200. But then when we get to the, the double label, so the label on both the ribose and the nicotinamide, you know, you've only got uh, four here, 20 here. So they're quite low numbers by comparison. So, you know, one uh, floor of this study that we discussed is that we took tissues too late. When you look at um, how, how quickly uh, NAD turnover occurs in the body in an animal, um, it actually occurs in some, some tissues quite rapidly. Uh, for example, in the gut, it happens, uh, I think, within uh, 20 minutes or so. I'll have to double check the number, but it can happen uh, relatively rapidly. So we waited a couple of hours after giving NMN. So it's likely that within that couple of hours, uh, actually, sorry, four hours after giving NMN, it's likely that if NA it was incorporated into NAT, it's probably been turned over. So that probably mm -hmm. explains why we don't see as much intact incorporation. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, one thing that I've always been uh, surprised by, and we are actually running some of these experiments right now, uh, is a direct comparison between nicotinamide, you know, that old school, very cheap vitamin uh, cofactor that's added to foods, and NR or NMN. Because, you know, there are actually a surprisingly small number of papers that have compared these, and they don't have similar properties, right? Mm -hmm. And if NR or NMN were truly entirely being broken down into just plain nicotinamide, you would expect that, uh, you know, there should be no difference between giving NR or NMN or just plain nicotinamide. But I think mm -hmm. that they are not the same and we need to trace that. So that's, you know, where we are at. Yeah, let me get boosters. Um, so, the, 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 uh, you know, four or five different uh, NAD boosters, one can choose. And I'll I'll go with the um um the most uh, uh basic ones the cheapest ones first and then we'll go to the more uh, the better ones and more expensive ones. So I, I think many people know that nicotinamide, sometimes called niacinamide, and um, can be used to uh, boost NAD. We just finished the clinical trial and we demonstrated that about 30% uh, of the participants uh, were able to elevate their NAD level. But again, the levels are not optimized. You do see an increase in about 30% of people, but even among these 30% of people, very few uh, have their levels above 40 micromole so it works it's very cheap i mean you can get it you know for very little money uh if you don't want to spend the uh the money on NAD boosting taking some nicotinamide um, may not be a, a better thing to do okay i i want to get everyone's NAD up so i want to give people the options and the second one is uh called uh, nicotinic acid NA. Now, NA and nicotinamide are also called niacin. The terminologies are, are very confusing. Uh, some people uh, call only nicotinic acid as niacin, that's what I do. And, but some other people put uh, nicotinamide and the nicotinic acid all as a category in niacin or vitamin B3. And let, let's use the scientific terminology so no one is confused. And when I talk about niacin, I mean nicotinic acid or NA. NA is a very interesting uh, supplement because it's a, a FDA approved drug uh, to treat uh, high cholesterol levels. Um, but it takes a very high dose, usually above a thousand milligrams of NA. And, and NA can cause flushing. Um, it's not uh, toxic, it's not harmful, but it's, to many people it's alarming and, and uh, annoying. And so if you don't like the flushing feeling, you want to be careful with, with niacin. And we have 
uh, a number of individuals um, who uh, were taking very high doses of niacin for various purposes, and we found their NAD level very, very high, you know, over 100 micromole. And so niacin at a very high dose can increase NAD levels very efficiently in a very small subset of individuals. Um, but taking niacin at the low dose, um, usually around the 10 milligram, that's when many people start getting the flushing problem. And 10 milligram or somewhere near is not sufficient uh, to elevate NAD levels. And again, niacin is a very cheap supplement, uh, even though uh, as a drug, it costs 10 times more, and the supplement is uh, very cheap. And uh, if someone doesn't want to spend the money uh, to elevate NAD, taking some niacin can be helpful. But, you know, get, get, to, a, get to a test to see whether it's working for you or not. And if you are taking very high doses of niacin, you have uh, uh, you you have a chance. I don't know how big a chance it is. We don't have enough data to say that uh, with certainty whether your NAD level is going to be high or not. If you are taking high doses of niacin, get an NAD test to find out what's your NAD level. Then the two most popular form of NAD uh, supplements, um, precursor supplements are uh, nicotinamide riboside, NR, and nicotinamide mononucleotide, or NMN. Both forms are quite effective. Uh, although the NR camp and the NMN camp have been debating for you know, over a decade, and I, I think the debates uh, are usually not based on fact, but more based on feelings or uh, what camp you fall into. I happen to not fall into a either camp. I, I want to use uh, the data uh, to speak. We have uh, way more data on NMN than on NR, but we do have some data on NR. What I can tell you is for many people, the efficacy of using NMN and NR is comparable, similar. And obviously, we don't have enough data on NR, and we don't have uh, a very large controlled experiment to compare the two. The right experiment to uh, find out which one's better is through a large scale uh, crossover study, meaning that you know you, you take an NMN, you wash out, you take an NR in one group, and you take an NR first, wash out, and then take an NMN uh, in another group. And such a crossover uh, design with large numbers of people, um, we should be able to figure out what the NMN is better, uh, what NR is better. And now, such experiment is very important, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary, at least for your audience. I think what's important for you and what's important for me is which one is working for you and which one is working for me, okay? And you can do it by testing. You can do it, ideally you want to test before and after taking uh, a supplement, and now this can be done. Now, theoretically, NMN can work better than R in terms of elevating NAD level if you look at a population, because NMN is a one-step precursor to NAD, meaning you only need one enzyme to make NAD from NMN. But NR 
it's a two-step precursor, meaning that you need the two enzymes to make uh, NAD from NR. NR is converted to NMM first by uh, NR kinase, and then NMM is converted into NAD. So imagine that you are deficient for NR kinase or NRK, and you take NR, you are not going to be able to make uh, NAD efficiently because you don't have enough uh, NR kinase to convert NR to NMN. Does it make sense, mm -hmm. right? So uh, there is a subset of people who may not be uh, optimum for the NR kinase. I don't know what's the percentage, but certainly such individuals do exist in the population. So if you look at, at the population level, uh, my bet is NMN should work better than NR, but looking at the individual level, that may not be true. So that, you know, that, that's kind of mm -hmm. a balanced uh, way of looking at the NR versus NMN debate. The second point is both NR and NMN uh, do have biological functions in addition to uh, serve as a precursor for NAD. We don't know, we, we know both of them have biological functions, but we don't know uh, which one is more important. And so I think the debate between NMN and NR should go beyond, much beyond how they elevate uh, one's NAD levels. We should also look at their biological functions. What I do know is NMN has very important functions. You know, when I take NMN, I can feel a difference within five minutes. And it, it's actually, you know, very, very potent. So my personal preference is NMN over NR. And um, I, I, I think because not only it can elevate NAD level in a higher proportion of individuals, um, but also has uh, many other biological functions um, by itself. And this debate will, will continue. And my recommendation to consumers is, you know, find out by yourself. Get an NAD test, try to see what other improvements you get uh, from NMN or NR. And we are now going to end this debate uh, anytime soon.